Hello, this is Joseph Anthony of the Wonder Child Blog, coming to you from the Walter School of Philadelphia in Mount Airy, Pennsylvania. And I'm here today to talk with you about one of the things that has been a bugaboo for parents, teachers, and children for generations. The times tables. The multiplication tables, if you will. So many children learn them, and then over the summer they forget them. And then they relearn them the next year, and then over the summer they forget them. And that frustrates parents, and that frustrates teachers, and the students can't figure out why they forget them either. Oh, they need to practice them. Yes, that's true. But there are many ways to practice them, and there are many ways to teach them in such a way, especially to young children, where you can honor their developmental stages in such a way that it will not only uh, get into their intellects, but it will get there to stay. And one of the ways you can honor the developmental stage of a child is to, is to realize they are very physical, active beings. And if you can make arithmetic and math something as boring for some people as the times tables, you can make that active learning, beautiful learning, so it engages their hearts and their imaginations, those two things, the heart and the body, will, will really fuse that knowledge into the intellect in a way that is lasting. So, for example, children are active and rhythmic beings, and the times tables are very rhythmic as well. So you can take advantage of that. And let's say, for example, you wanted to teach the threes times tables. One of the things you could do is come up with a verse, learn it by heart, and then teach it to the children without mentioning numbers or times tables or anything like that. But teach it to them. Move the desks out of the way and the chairs, make a circle, and march the verse around the room with them behind you. And then introduce the times tables after you've established the rhythm and the verse and maybe a story that surrounds the verse. So that really gets their imagination going. And uh, here's an example of if you wanted to teach the threes times tables. Brave and true, I will be. Each kind word sets me free. Each good deed makes me strong. I will fight for the right. I will conquer the wrong. Now, I'm moving forward and backwards because I have a camera six feet in front of me, but you could march that around the room. And as they get that verse deeply into their bones, then you could say, You know, children, I just came up with something very curious. Watch. Three, six, nine, twelve. 18, 21. That verse is in a beat of three. I'm whispering the first two, one, two, and then really getting those threes in with a good forceful stop. Gets those bodies involved very nicely for young children. That's one example. You can come up with uh, little verses for the twos times tables, or even the fours but you have to really stretch your imaginations. You may have to write it yourself. I wrote one for the fours. I don't remember the whole thing, but it goes a little bit like this. It was about a man who couldn't stand very well because all he wanted to do was run. There was a man who could not stand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's on the count of four. Yeah, there, right, <laughs> the right verse. So, there's lots you can do with verses and poetry to help get the rhythm of the times tables. You can also use music. This is one of my favorite things to do to help children remember the times tables. Take a familiar song. Row, row, row your boat. And just thread the times tables through that melody. One times two is two, two times two is four, Three times two is six, and four times two is eight. Five times two is ten, and six times two is twelve. 
7 times 2 is 14, and 8 times 2 is 16, 9 times 2 is 18, 10 times 2 is 20, 11 times 2 is 22, and 12 times 2 is 24. I think I got them all right. <laughs> Put it in a song. It will definitely get into their bodies and in their hearts in a way that is fun for them, as well as memorable. You can challenge their intellects as they get all that kind of thing memorized, have them go backwards. Twelve times two is twenty-four, eleven times two is twenty-two, ten times two is twenty, and eight and nine times two is eighteen. But only after you get them forward memorized well. The kids that need a little stretch, have them go backwards. You could put a sort of hopscotch grid on the ground. This room, you can't see it right now, uh, on the floor, what I can see is it has these 12-inch uh, square tiles, and you could mark with chalk, so you can erase it later, the twos times tables, or the threes, and have them hop those uh, number of squares. So if I were to do the twos, I'd put two, four, <laughs> six, eight. You could make the threes and have them get a bigger jump, or maybe the fours to really stretch those legs, and they love challenges like that. You could also use things like rhythm sticks and come up with different patterns uh, to help the times tables get in to their bones. One, two, three, six, nine, twelve. Whatever you want to do. One, two, four, five, six. You could have one set of children doing the twos and another set of children doing a different pattern, but the threes times tables or the fours times tables, and see which, which numbers they all are banging at the same time. If they're doing the twos and the threes, they're all going to bang on the six, and that will make them that will perk up their ears and you can ask those kinds of leading questions to them. Which ones was everyone banging on at the same time? You could use a bean bag. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And get the eye-hand coordination going as well as the times tables at the same time. You could bounce a ball. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Lots of things you can do. You could even bring them outside. Find some flowers, like a violet. It has five petals. And you can say, there are two violets here. They each have five. Five, two times is what? Well, it's ten. What if you had three violets? And they can count those petals. So five, three times is fifteen. And use things in nature to make it beautiful. You could draw those violets and uh, number the, the petals or something like that. Lots of things you can do to get the body involved and the imagination involved to help teach the times tables. I hope these ideas uh, and, and uh, techniques, uh, that I hope you find them helpful. <laughs> Next video is going to be about me learning to speak. <laughs> anyway, I hope you find them very helpful and uh, to you. And uh, so, you know, you got to realize too that what this means if you're a parent, you can't just teach the times tables with flashcards, although that is important to get the visual element in there for sure. You may have to get up out of the chair at the kitchen table and march with your kid or sing with your child the times tables. Get actively involved with your child's learning and it will make a world of difference. So, this is Joseph Anthony of the Wonder Child blog. Have a great day.